This is a disclaimer that while discussing this case, we present a lot of our opinions, and our opinions are just that, opinions. They are not facts. All right, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Ectoplasm and Evil. I think we're on our 10th episode now. Ectoplasm and Evil, let's go. Yes, the double digits. Amazing. We made it. Well, speaking of episodes and podcasts, you just launched your podcast. I did, yeah. So this is a pretty exciting week. On Monday, I launched the very first episode of my podcast, All Grown Up Psych. My guest was none other than Jim Jenkins, the guy that created Doug. So if you're listening to this and you're a 90s kid, and you loved Doug, whether it was on Nickelodeon or on Disney or both like me, check it out. It's a great episode. There's a lot of details, a lot of things I didn't know. I learned a lot of new things about the show and it just gives you a whole new context, which I really appreciated because now it's like, wow, when I rewatch the episodes, I'll have these things top of mind. Right. Actually, you want to know probably one of the best compliments I got about that episode. Yeah. Someone hit me up and they said, I never watched Doug before. Wow. But I want to watch it now because of your podcast. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And they were like, yeah, it was just such an engaging podcast and everything about it sounded so interesting that even though I did not grow up watching Doug, I'm going to seek it out to watch it now. That's amazing. Yeah, I thought, that was, that. I thought that was pretty sweet. I was like, wow, that's like, you know, obvi I would assume that people that like Doug would like the podcast. Yeah. But the fact that it's a property that's... 33 years old yeah and you would inspire someone to listen to your podcast in the first place even though they had no context right and then be like oh this was cool i want to watch the show now yeah it's pretty dope it's so awesome yeah i can't believe doug is 33 years old that was like a big one yeah 1991 which is like yeah so i, I get 32 then but almost 33 it's almost as old as us correct yeah that's the crazy thing it was always like one of my top shows for sure it was like an after school i would have my like fruit and milk and i would watch doug that was one fruit of the shows. and milk yeah yeah <laughs> yeah for sure milk one of those things that in the 90s the media hammered down our throats <laughs> they did no, they okay. were like if you don't drink your milk you're fucked like you can only osteoporosis be healthy. yeah yeah your yeah. bones did, are gonna crack at 30 i already know the answer to this question but did you ever watch the Tom Green show? No. <laughs> okay. I'm sure your parents didn't let you, judging by what I know about your family. But the Tom Green had a hilarious, like, got milk. It was a sketch comedy show. Yeah. Or I don't even know if it qualifies as that. It was like a, I don't know, a reality show. Okay. But you know Tom Green. Yeah. So he did this whole routine about got milk and then there's a, a the part that i always remember is like he's just screaming out on the street osteoporosis rules <laughs> i'm gonna have to watch that yeah now. i gotta find that episode because I, I i'm realizing as i'm telling it to you now that i have no context for the rest of it i just uh, remember that it was a sketch about milk and i think he was making fun of got milk clearly. And, but, he, but he said that line and i remember that was something that like my friends and i would quote that's amazing yeah I am one of those freak people, though, who I love milk. I can drink that shit plain. No, milk and, is great. You know? I'm not I'm not knocking milk. Milk, oh. is, milk is wonderful. No, no, no. You're definitely not knocking. I just know a lot of people think it's disgusting, and I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm kind of gross, I guess. Well, I guess, no. Why would you be gross? For enjoying it. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Olo is like screaming. What is the deal? Uh, yeah. Is he looking? Olo, no. I just took that little bastard to the bathroom. <laughs> he has no reason to be screaming in the background. <laughs> Oh, my God. But yeah, All Grown Up Psych. It's out now. It's out now. Yeah. It's going to be coming out every Monday. Every Monday. For a while, at least indefinitely. You know, yeah. I haven't decided, you know, maybe how many episodes would be in a season or something like that. But I'm going to yeah. keep banging them out for right now. You know, I keep getting guests, so I'm going to keep banging them out. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun because it's the really nice thing is that I'm getting to know all my childhood heroes at right. a much more personal level. Yeah. You're getting that insight too. like these are the people who made shows that you connected with so hard when you were young. And it's like, wow, now I get to really take a peek behind the curtain and see what brought these shows to life yeah see what brought the shows to life and it's not you know it's not just shows there's people from all aspects mm -hmm. of pop culture on there right. you know we're gonna have musicians yeah. we're gonna have athletes mm -hmm. all types of folks that were significant to us in the 90s and 2000s you know our childhood and adolescent years yeah we got to put charles barkley shaquille o'neal on the like dream list obviously michael jordan who will that would be like lit that would be amazing he'll probably i'm sure he'll never do it but i think i could get charles and shaq that'd be sick if you talk about shaq October. Yo, Shaqtober. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. Maybe we could be like VIP guests at Shaqtober. That'd be so lit. Yeah. And then you could also, you know, tell Charles Barkley, be God. Want to be, be God. I, I would certainly never say that to Charles Barkley, but I would ask him to say it, you know with me maybe in regards yeah, no, to something no. else yeah i mean in joke context like it's all space jam 
you know yeah I mean? no no i i, I know i know i just still i wouldn't feel comfortable i mean even in the movie i felt bad when she was saying it to it was him. so sad it was so sad because you knew that he wasn't a wannabe he wasn't you know but she was all like you're not charles barkley you're just a wannabe that looks like him. <laughs> you know it's like fuck yo that's charles barkley like what, yeah. you, what you mean this man is suffering right now his talent was stolen by <laughs> aliens i know that don't make no sense to you but it's facts it happened it is it's real yeah you know, so that was grimy, and I felt terrible for him. So I, yeah, I it wouldn't... was heartbreak. The look on his face. Was Yo, that man, I get, that man can act because yeah. the look on his face was heartbreaking. <laughs> I saw that movie in theaters with yeah, my mom, yeah. and I was like, "Damn, bro!" That was the height of you know my NBA fandom as well, right? right. I admittedly dropped off, you know, after Jordan retired, and and especially after college when you know the hype of the Celtics and stuff died yeah. down. But those years were my hype of. NBA fandom right. and that so going in you're like oh all the players that are on there I'm very attached to them yeah because I'm reading about them month to month in mm -hmm. Sports Illustrated for kids yeah reading their interviews I got their posters yeah you're watching the games I got their cards I watching the games with my dad I got the action figures yeah so you know all that lead up and then you see them and you're like damn bro <laughs> look at the pain on Charles Barkley's <laughs> face you know <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> And they all went to like the doctor and stuff man yeah that was that was such a good movie that was such an iconic film and i know people toss around the word iconic so like all the time these but days but that was truly yeah that yeah. was something i mean groundbreaking yes i now i feel like watching space jam after this i'm down you ain't gotta ask me <laughs> twice to watch space jam <laughs> I think that was like a weekend special for me. I feel like for a hot second, because obviously you had the clamshell. Yeah, the clamshell. Yeah, yep. every weekend. Like that was the Saturday did night you have any choice. The, did you have any of the McDonald's toys? I didn't. You know, I didn't have that much McDonald's Damn. when I was well, younger. I, My well, mom didn't really well, like it. Well, I got them also. For all intents and purposes, you got them now. That's true. You know, that's marriage. Yes. In other news, you also had your very first, like this is a week of first, you know, first episode of All Grown Up Psych. Yeah. You had your very first hot glazed Krispy Kreme donut. I did, man. That shit was fucking amazing. I have been able to stop thinking about it. I know. Oh, man, that like reignited my love for it because when I was a kid, there was a Krispy Kreme not too far from my house. Yeah. So that was like something we'd get as a treat on the weekends every every month, probably. And you just happened to time it so that you was getting them hot? Yeah. First thing in the morning, they were fresh. Oh. They were coming off the conveyor belt. How early were you popping over there? My dad was popping over there. I feel like it was around like eight. And then bringing them home? Nine, yeah. But they were still hot when they he got still home. Hot. I mean, sometimes we'd go with him. Yeah. Man. You know that melt in your mouth that's when i first discovered donuts actually my first ever donut was, was a krispy, krispy kreme donut no yeah. way yeah it was like a childhood thing you know the hat and everything that's crazy and that's in california right in yeah, yeah. NorCal. okay that's what's up that's it that's so interesting i mean for you know for me obviously it was duncan yeah east coast yeah i don't know the crispy history off the top of my head but i do know that it wasn't until i was in high school uh -huh. that i became made aware of krispy kreme because one opened up pretty close to the crib right but there certainly weren't as frequent in my area at least when I was growing up. Yeah. Duncan is on every block. Right? Yeah. And I love Duncan. I know that because you know what else I remember? For a brief second in time, I don't know if you're going to remember this, we had a Krispy Kreme Duncan rivalry. We did? Yeah, we did. Where I was like, Krispy Kreme is the shit. And you're like, fuck you, Duncan's the shit. Really? And I was like, nothing was, was beats that, a Krispy Kreme glazed. Was that before we were going out? Yeah, that was before we were going out. No way. Yeah. Was this, was this before we met in person? It might have been. I think we did. Yeah, it was. Because then I went to tour BU again yeah. to like see it, you know, for and you the had second Duncan time. Again. And I had Duncan and I told you about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is pretty good. Well, you remember you that? You know what? Now I do remember this. Now <laughs> I do remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mad funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, because so I remember in high school when that Krispy had opened kind of close to the crib and, uh -huh. down and close to the high school, Krispy Kreme glaze became a thing in school, right? Yeah. People were would pop over there like before or after school and cop the dozen glazed right. and it was like it was a big thing and i'll agree i think in the glazed versus glazed war that crispy wins and the apple fritter that was your new conclusion too and the apple fritter mm -hmm. but crispy's version of boston cream for yeah, example right? i agree lacking absolutely lacking and that makes sense since Duncan is a Boston born thing. Yeah. Or uh, Massachusetts born, but yeah. Duncan beat the shit out of Crispy in terms of the drinks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's not even close. It's not even close to comparable. Yeah. But the rest of the other donuts, I think they're they, they both they, they, yeah, pretty comparable. They both they pumpkin, both have edges. The pumpkin glazed is amazing. The pumpkin flavors are good. The yes. Duncan pumpkin is amazing. It's a little thick here, so it's got a little yeah. more heft to it. What I will hand crispy is I think they do more seasonals. They do more seasonals, but sometimes those seasonals can be a little shitty. Like the minis. Right. The Easter seasonal was ass. It was, yeah, because it was just, mini. Just keeping it all the way a buck. Well, not just because it was mini, but it was the flavor. It was the it was like it a was, mini normal be, cake donut. Yeah, because there was no 
special flavor. It no. was just a normal donut. That, it was decorated. It wasn't even like glazed. Or, I mean, they had it was a donut with frosting on it, but it yeah. wasn't like... It wasn't good. It was very dense. It wasn't light, which is what I'm looking for from crispy, especially. Right. We have a lighter, fair donut, and that's what's enjoyable about it. Yeah. They didn't fucking deliver. No, they didn't. That was whack. That was a waste of macros. It was a waste of macros. It wasn't there, and I do love a lot of their other stuff, but yeah. stop doing this shit if you're not putting a flavor to it. Yeah. But crispy does have nice aesthetics. Yes. Regardless. Even though shitty donuts, they had a nice aesthetic. Yeah. Remember the Ghostbuster edition? Yeah, they never donuts? brought those back. I guess that was just like a temporary license or whatever. They had that right. one Halloween. I don't rem even remember if it coincided with the release of that new film. I don't think it did. I think we were... Maybe I think it was we just were, an anniversary? Yeah, it was an anniversary, I think. and Because you and I were like, why the fuck haven't they brought these back for the movie? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that was a dope... I think I'm pretty sure we still have pictures or videos of them yeah. for, from that year. But that was fire. And they tasted great, too. They were so good. But yeah, I mean, both Crispy and Duncan have their pros and their cons. Absolutely. Huge shout out to Crispy for bringing back the pumpkin spice glaze, though, for April Fool's weekend. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Gotta hand them that. That was <laughs> great we went off with that we did we went off with that yeah everywhere should kind of take that example yeah everywhere should take that example for half a ween yes bring back stuff that we like you know what i mean that april 30th may 1st realm just do a little two-day bring back you know bring back the mcdonald's could bring back the pumpkin cream pie yes. you know duncan could bring back the psl just give us a little something Give us something. You know what I mean? You heard it here first. Give us something for half a ween. Also, let's bring back trick-or-treating for both those days. Imagine if you got to trick-or-treat three, treat, uh, trick wow, treat yeah. three times a year. That would be fire. That would be lit. That would be fire. Two times a year trick-or-treating? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that would... I literally said three because the first and the 30th. Like, I, shit, who knows? I thought I heard you say three. And oh, then I said I, three. Yeah, okay. I was being I, excessive. I mean, that might be too OD. It could you know, be. There's a certain balance by which it loses its magic specialty. Yeah. You're right. But we could do summer weed in like that episode of Gravity Falls. Yes. Yeah. I'm certainly not mad at a twice a year, a little twice a year thing. Yeah. Make it keep it festive. Yeah. Although, I mean, there's definitely something about the warm weather that would throw it off a little bit. Summer weed, you know. No, no, I understand. But yeah, the, uh, the operative part of that statement was that the Krispy Kreme glazed when fresh is mm -hmm. a whole different ball game. Yes. I mean, it's an amazing donut regardless. But when you have it fresh. It's my hot favorite. Hot off the press. Yeah. You know, damn, that shit was crazy. We walked in and that girl was like, yo, samples. And as soon as I grabbed it, I was like, damn, this is warm. I've I never... don't even need anything else. Yeah. And when they were like, you know, what, what can we get for you today? I was like, fucking more samples and let's bounce. <laughs> let's bounce, fam. Crispy, if you ever hear this, give us some more free samples. Give us some more samples. That's all we need. Okay, without further ado, let's talk about the mysterious disappearance of Rahul Raju. All the information I have on this story is from articles in the New Ind Press, the New Indian Express, the Indian Express, the News Minute, On Manoram, and Madhyam. Trigger warning for pedophilia and sexual assault. Oh, what the fuck? Apologies in advance for any mispronunciations. On May 18th, 2005, seven-year-old Rahul Raju went to play cricket with his friends near his home in Ashram Ward, Alapuza, Kerala. Okay. That day he was wearing shorts, a plaid shirt, a gold chain, and a gold ring. Rahul decided to take a break from batting and he went to drink water from a public water fountain in the corner of the playground. A bearded middle-aged man who was standing near the fountain snatched the bat from him and threw it to his friends, but they didn't pay attention to who had thrown the bat their way. His friends picked up the bat and continued playing. The reason for his friends not noticing was because Rahul was the captain of the team and would often hand his bat to a teammate if he realized his team was losing the game. He'd then run home, claiming he was going to get some water. But on that day, he was playing well, and the kids soon realized that he didn't rejoin the game and they had no idea where he was. This would be the last time they'd see him. Hold on. Yes. So they're playing cricket. Yes. And an adult man uh -huh. comes over, grabs his bat. He doesn't come over. He's oh. at the water fountain that Rahul went to and he grabbed the bat and he just threw it back in the direction of the kids. Got it. So the bat gets thrown, but they didn't think to look over. Yeah, because this is he's in the habit of kind of doing No, no, this. I, I got that part. Yeah. We're to assume then that the water fountain is in a secluded part of this park. It's in the corner of a park. Because no, obviously nobody saw this. As far as we know. Yes. Okay, okay. The children ran to Rahul's house, but he wasn't there. His maternal grandmother, Shashila, was the only person who was home. 
His mother, Minnie, was attending a self-help group meeting, and Minnie's father, Shivaram, had gone out. Rahul's father, Era Raju, worked in Kuwait with an oil corporation. At the time of his disappearance, Raju was their only child. The search for Rahul started immediately with his relatives and neighbors combing all the ponds and wells in the area since children are sadly known to fall into wells and ponds. However, they were unsuccessful in their search. They suspected that he might have been kidnapped for the gold chain and the ring he wore. People spread out in different directions directions in search of him but were unable to find him. The police took over the search after Minnie filed a complaint. IG Sain Kumar came down to oversee the investigation and a canine was also set up to search for Rahul. Rahul was considered to be too young to have run away from home and his family was on good terms with everyone in the neighborhood. Workers from neighboring states and tour guides who visited the area were considered suspects. The police managed to question a man named Krishna who admitted to killing Rahul and throwing his body into a marsh. However, the police were unable to find the body and the investigation whoa, went whoa, nowhere. Whoa. Ho mm -hmm. Hold up. So they quickly found the person that did this. No, this was a guy who they questioned and it seems as though he was just fucking around because this confession turned out to be fabricated. What? Yeah. He was, what do you mean by he was just fucking around? Like was he fucking, made this up. But for what reason? Why would someone know. pretend that they killed a child? Here's what I'm going to tell you. I think he may have had an idea potentially of what happened. We never hear about this man again, but there's a few people who are kind of investigated and they say stuff and it's like almost as though they might have known something and they're just trying to give the family no hope as to where this child could possibly be. So there's possibly multiple people involved with this then? Yeah, I don't know for a fact obviously that this guy is actually involved but he this was just a false confession. Why was he brought in? Like what for what reason did the police suspect him? They were just interrogating a bunch of people, like anyone at that time, and I guess he was just a suspicious character. Anyone at that time where? Basically, anyone from neighboring states and tour guides who would visit the area because they were all kind of sus. They weren't like okay. the direct Well, neighbors. anyone from neighboring states could be like uh, thousands of people. Yeah, but anyone who like came in and did business. Got it. So they, how would they even know who was there? I couldn't tell you that. Okay, so they brought him in for questioning, mm -hmm. and when they were questioning him, he just says... Yeah, I kidnapped him and killed him. And threw his That's body into says. a marsh. Yeah, and there could have been so many reasons. He could have been in on it. He could have been threatened by the police to like give a confession for all we know. He could have been threatened by someone else who he witnessed doing something to take the fall for it. Right. There's so many possibilities. Yeah. Later on, the police found out that these confessions were fabricated and the local police and the crime branch failed to find Rahul or any other evidence to move the case forward. They find out, the police found out the confessions were fabricated how? He came forward and was like, I made this up? I never actually found out how they found that out. Okay. That was never made clear. Got it. Yeah. And I took that specific point and searched and searched and searched. And for some reason, nothing came up. Interesting. Yes, it is interesting. There are a lot of details in this case that when you look further, you can't find anything else, huh. which I found very, it's like all from report summaries. Right. The case was handed over to the CBI and they took over on June 14th, 2005. The CBI questioned 25 people in the neighborhood regarding Rahul's disappearance. While this was taking place, Rahul's father received an anonymous letter stating that the child was taken to Toru Puza to remove his kidney to sell on the black market. However, this was found to be false after verifying with hospital records. What the fuck? Yeah. And they checked every hospital there. And they didn't find anything to verify. What if that wasn't done in a hospital? Though? That's what I was thinking, you know, because I feel like most of these people who are doing this sort of stuff on the black Probably market. Probably don't do it in the hospital. Yeah. I'm wondering, like, do they usually sell kidneys from the black market to the hospital? Like, because then how else, I guess, do you get it into another person? I, I'm not exactly sure how that works. That's another good question. I don't know. Originally, my first thought was, well, no shit, you're not going to find it in a hospital, in a hospital record. But then I was like, wait a second, where do they sell these kidneys? To? But also, okay, even if they were doing it in a hospital there would certainly be no record of it i'm imagining you right. you're paid off yeah whatever people at the hospital that you have as part right. of your organization that are doing this yeah i mean because there's no way you're just bringing a random kid to the hospital yeah and normal good doctors and staff are being like yeah we'll take his fucking kidney out absolutely there's no way so they all have to be involved yeah in which case there would be no record so that doesn't prove anything no that's what i thought too so this anonymous letter was by somebody who was hoping to be informative not necessarily someone who was like being a dick yeah as far as we know as far as we know Okay. I believe that it was just a trying to be a helpful tip. Right. I guess, yeah, they probably were scared of blowback from the perpetrators. Right. Exactly. Right. I mean, that sounds viable because yeah. we've heard a lot about the fucked up organ trade thing Absolutely. that goes on. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's very common. Yep. The CBI announced a reward for any information about Rahul, and this was publicized in Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and Mumbai. In spite of this, no one provided a tip that actually led to the boy. In February 2006, the CBI learned that Rahul's neighbor, Rojo George, was near the playground on that day. Rojo became the prime suspect, and he underwent a brain map and a polygraph test. Rojo is a grown man? Yes. Okay. An adult. The test suggested his active participation and a case was registered against him. On this basis, he was subjected to a narco analysis test, which is basically using truth serum. During this test, he revealed that Rahul was kidnapped and taken to Mumbai by train, and he denied that Rahul was murdered. Based on these revelations, a detailed investigation was conducted, but no evidence came to light to prove his involvement. Hold up. Yeah. So this guy was given truth serum. Yes. And under that truth serum, he said that Rahul was kidnapped yes. and taken to Mumbai. Yeah. By him? No. He didn't say that it was by him. He just said that he's aware. Yeah. He was involved in this. He was involved. Yeah. So there are guaranteed then multiple people involved. Yeah. There's definitely multiple people involved. But he didn't say who involved. did it. He didn't say who did it. And he's saying that Rahul wasn't killed. He said that Rahul wasn't killed. However, once again, there's no actual evidence of any of this. So the police can't actually do anything about it or don't do anything about it. So Rojo just goes free? Yeah. So after admitting to being a part of kidnapping yes. this child, Rojo goes free. Yeah, he's chilling. That's insane. Wouldn't his self-admission be all that one would need? That's what I would think. But maybe the rules are different there. Because like maybe they need like proof. They need to find the boy. They need to like. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they felt, oh, someone might have like threatened him or he wasn't like actively, actively a part of this. I don't know. Okay. Now the police in Kerala did note that missing children reached an all time high in 2006 with a child going missing every eight hours. Holy shit. Yeah, it skyrocketed. So whoever did this, like there's an organization that's doing this or whatever and they're just doing it at an alarming rate that's the thought yes and although some of these children have been found since the police don't know how many of them have been actually found or did, recovered did they pursue any leads to mumbai after they heard that story from rojo because rojo said by train correct mm -hmm. so did they like go to the train station and be like let's see you know, what trains left this area to Mumbai on XYZ days and talk to the conductors, see who, if there's records of the passengers, question people, did you see a child? They definitely conducted like this thorough investigation, but they couldn't find anything. Wow. An allegedly thorough investigation. Okay. Police sources believe that many of these children could have been abducted for begging or worse. One senior officer said, quote, children are vital for organized begging gangs operating all over the state and beyond. Well, that's also a thing that we've heard a lot about. Yeah. It was uh, featured in Slumdog Millionaire. Yeah, which really brought it to light, I feel like. But it's a real but it's a real thing. It is it's a real a thing. It's a very real thing. Yep. They need more of them all the time, and there's no way we could hope to trace them once the kids are taken out of state, end quote. The kids who are abducted or lured away by the organized rackets from one state are taken to another to avert detection, so that's why recovering them isn't easy. It's pretty immediate. One officer said pedophilia had also become an endemic in Kerala, stating, quote, child sex is a growing menace here, and these what children the are easy fuck? prey, end quote. Yeah. Wow. Fucking disgusting. Yeah. So it could have been part of the begging, could have been... Could have been both. Both. And there were a lot of cases where children had been found assaulted. So fucked up. This. So fucked up. Yeah. On March 28th, 2009, the CBI approached the Ernakulam Chief Judicial Magistrate Court and informed them that, quote, in spite of all efforts made, the boy Rahul remained untraceable, end quote. The magistrate replied that it was premature for the CBI, which is supposed to be the prime investigating agency in India, to throw up their arms in despair and give up, especially regarding such a sensationalized case. This case was all over the news all over the country the court declined to accept the cbi report and ordered further investigation in 2009 and what's really fucked up is someone who worked at the court said the cbi like really didn't want to or communicate with them in general for a minute like, what yeah they straight like, dropped why is, why would this not be top priority yeah i don't there don't are know. children going missing 
yeah. for the most nefarious of purposes. Yeah. And this is not top priority for the for the the authorities. It's interesting because they're saying that he's untraceable and like, yeah, there are in so many countries missing kids. Well, he's find, definitely but... untraceable if you're not trying to trace him. Yeah. I don't know why they weren't able to like take any of these leads they were given and really follow through with them. This is despicable. Yeah. It felt shady. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you have to wonder if they're involved right i mean or if someone's involved or if someone's involved stuff. well because not necessarily related to this incident but there's been plenty of times that i have heard stories where there's members of the police involved right there's yeah. a, there's people or entire departments right. getting their monthly payoff yeah so that they stay out of whoever's business right right i mean that's a frequent thing in mumbai at many times yeah, it's a fact. in lots of places mm -hmm. where there's a big organized crime presence yeah right so yeah you really have to wonder you do Rahul's mother, Minnie, said she had no expectations from the CBI, saying that she had been keeping a watch on the proceedings because of the CBI's reputation as the country's top agency. She said her hope of her son returning would still be alive regardless of the CBI's progress. As investigations continued, reports of a boy begging in Mumbai who looked like Rahul were followed up on, however, the boy wasn't Rahul. The Adur police arrested and questioned a man from Haripad named Krishna Pillai for sexually assaulting and murdering a three-year-old girl. Wow. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Pillai confessed to the police that he had killed Rahul and had thrown the child's body into the marsh in Alafuza's palace ward. However, the police couldn't find the body there. So did he also make up a story? Well, the police couldn't find the body over there where he claimed he dropped it. And then they couldn't find any other evidence to substantiate his confession. But this is the second person that's yes. said that they've murdered this child. Yeah. He was jailed for the murder of the three-year-old, but his involvement in Rahul... Raju's disappearance was never proven. What the fuck is going on? I don't know. I just don't understand how many people would like falsely confess to a thing. I'm not sure what is making them do that. I don't know if it's like being beaten into like this fake confession. Well, so this person that we're talking about here is mm -hmm. obviously a despicable individual yes. because he did the other crime Absolutely. that he, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not beyond him to have done this. No, it's not. So where he said he threw the body, right? By the yeah. time by the time he gave this confession, it's years later. Yeah. So the body could have been moved from there, right? The, I mean, it, not necessarily someone moving it like manually, but I don't know, like weather, like a marsh, isn't there? Like that's a, a, maybe there's like a, animals. A, there's animals. Yeah, exactly. Like so, just because they couldn't find the body there doesn't mean he didn't do it. No, it doesn't mean that. But because they couldn't find it, they didn't do anything about it in terms of connecting this guy to Rahul. Wow. In early 2013, the CBI filed a plea before the High Court of Kerala to allow them to close the case as they found Rahul once again untraceable. However, Rahul's father filed an objection petition against the CBI plea because he was determined to find his son. In October 2013, the CBI interrogated several suspects, including a few new suspects. The CBI stated, quote, Mahesh, a resident of Ashram Ward, who along with his co-workers was constructing a septic tank at the new house of Abdul Aziz in the same ward, were questioned to find out if they had any involvement with the case. Mahesh and his co-workers came to the house of Abdul by 8 a.m. and they worked till 6 p.m. The statement of the witnesses also proved that they were present at the house and have no involvement in the case. So this is other people in the neighborhood, basically, who had become suspects. For what reason? Because they were around, I guess, the area at that time. They're kind of sus they were working they were from out of town got it but you know, they had an alibi they had an alibi which who knows if it was real who does know the agency further submitted that during the investigation it was revealed that the playground from where rahul went missing had been shut down long since and the entire area of ashram ward had been revamped and then the cbi brings up rojo again the cbi then stated quote despite all the efforts the boy remains untraced and no evidence has come forth against the accused rojo george so rojo is completely dropped in 2013 but is he still maintaining that he did it? Rojo never said he did it. That was a different guy. There's a guy named Krishna. Ro Rojo didn't say he committed the crime. He said that this kid was kidnapped and sent to Mumbai by train. Right. Who was the first guy that said he did it? It was a guy named Krishna. So, just in the neighborhood. And who was the second guy that said he did it? Krishna. His name's also Krishna. So two separate Krishnas. Yeah. Right? Okay. So Krishna one says that he murdered this kid. Mm -hmm. Krishna two says he murdered this kid. Mm -hmm. Rojo said that he's aware 
that this kid was kidnapped and sent via train to Mumbai. Yeah. But both Krishnas claim to have dumped the body somewhere right there. Yeah. Not in Mumbai. Uh -huh. Did any of these people ever get Rojo and both Krishnas in a room and slap the shit out of them? No. And say, y'all motherfuckers better get your story straight and tell us what's really going on. No. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, that's what I would do. Yeah. Right? Everybody that has a separate story, get them all to in the same fucking place and be like, all right, bro, y'all gonna need to get this story straight right now. Yeah. Okay, Rojo, if you're aware that this kid was kidnapped, which one of these dudes took him? Yeah. Right? Or who was it? And if you guys are saying that you killed him and you put him here, well, how come both of you can't be right? Yeah. So which one of y'all is lying? Yeah. And then gauge people's reactions. Fucking the truth serum. Give truth serum to all of them. Yeah, give truth serum to everybody. I don't I don't understand what's going on here. I don't either. It just feels like... It seems like nobody's doing the bare minimum to solve the fucking exactly. case. That's what it seems it like. It feels like they were not placing importance on this child's disappearance. Because, I mean, people are outright saying that they were involved in some way, shape, or form. And how the fuck can you still not find him? That's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. This is disgusting. Yeah. It's completely fucked up. It makes no sense. And it's really just like... This is the top investigation unit in India. Yeah. What are y'all doing? That's embarrassing. It is. Unable to find anything new regarding Rahul's whereabouts, on March 13th, 2014, the CBI filed the closure report of the case for the fourth time before the court. The CBI, in its report, stated that the boy remains untraceable despite all efforts to trace him. Rahul's father, A.R. Raju, said there was nothing they could do except hope that their son is still alive. He suspected that an international kidnapping racket was involved in the case and his son might have been abducted and taken somewhere outside the country. Fuck. He said, quote, what can we do other than hope he is still alive? Last year, after a phone call that Rahul was seen in Mumbai, I went there and stayed for three months searching for him. I don't suspect any of our neighbors. Some international gang has taken him to a foreign land, end quote. He said that he would consult his counsel on what can be done in the wake of the CBI's closure petition. A.R. Raju fought for 17 years trying to find his son, but on May 22nd, 2022, at the age of 55, A.R. Raju hanged himself. A few days after his death, his wife Minnie got a letter from a woman claiming that she had seen a boy who looked similar to Rahul. She also sent a few recent photos of this boy. The letter mentioned that the boy was currently staying in Nadumbaseri in Arnakulam district. First of all, that's extremely sad that this kid's dad hung himself. Yeah. Hanged himself. Yeah. Uh, wow. I mean, all I can say is I feel him. I mean, because he, he invests his whole life into trying to find his son and to no avail. To no avail. I don't, yeah. He did also have a daughter, though. Did he? Yeah. I remember I said that was their first child before. Oh, my know? God. Oh, yeah. so he, he left this. The, his daughter the... was born three years after Rahul's disappearance. Her name was Shivani. Oh, my God. But, you know, of course, there's so much going on. Yeah. No, I, oh, I, I can't. None of us can even begin to understand the right depression he was going through unless yeah. you're in his situation right absolutely the, or i don't even know if depression is the right word for it it's that to an extreme right yeah i mean day in and day out that's all you're thinking about is what fucked up shit happened to your kid yeah that's got to be the heaviest thing to deal with definitely it takes a toll yeah and there's no closure because there is no solution and the one institution that you're banking on finding your kid can't seem to find your kid right it's very sad yeah so what happened with this claim of the boy that could be Rahul? Well, after receiving the letter, Minnie lodged a complaint with the Alapuza police chief seeking a detailed inquiry. She said, quote, the woman who sent the letter is in Mumbai. She claims to have seen this boy in Mumbai. And she said the boy is presently in Nidumbaseri. The boy in the photos looks similar to Rahul. However, the boy in the photograph sent from Mumbai spoke to the media several times in the past few years about his life because a police officer from Kerala had previously posted his photo because he had noted the similarities between Rahul and this boy. So according to the boy who remains unnamed, he remembered staying in an orphanage at a young age and had no recollection of his parents. He said he was brought up by his aunt till he was in the eighth grade. And he said that his aunt told the school that she had found him during a devastating tsunami that had hit the coastline of Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh in 2004. Hold up. He was brought up in an orphanage till when? In his earlier life. And then he was taken in by his aunt before the disappearance of Rahul because Rahul disappeared in 2005. So he, he was brought up in an orphanage from birth till... A certain age. Yeah. Which was what? I'm not sure what the age was, but it was... But in 2004, 
his aunt adopted him from the orphanage right and brought him up yeah and rahul went missing in 2005 so unless this kid was brainwashed right it's not rahul yeah wouldn't a dna test be very easy to tell yeah you know i'm not sure why maybe he doesn't want to give his dna because he doesn't believe that it's him i mean yeah i guess so did everyone take his word for it or what yeah after the eighth grade his aunt moved to bengaluru and he went to mumbai for a year and then he returned to dumbasari and started working to earn enough to resume his studies and he said that he believes this to be a case of mistaken identity okay well he could be right he could be i mean there's a lot of people who look pretty similar to people and you see doppelgangers all the time so it's totally possible right and he was still living with his aunt at that time yeah so i guess yeah i mean that doesn't sound like a nefarious purpose or anything this kid was living in a normal life right with his aunt so it's unlikely that yeah it's unlikely yeah and as of now rahul still remains missing there are no leads no suspects nothing incredibly fucked up yeah on so many levels definitely i think the most fucked up thing to take away is how often this is happening and still happening yeah like i mean rahul's story is not an isolated incident it is not it's the furthest thing from an isolated incident yeah it's right it's happening, happening in pretty alarming numbers not only all over that country but all over the world yeah i just got a paper today out of the mail and at the bottom of the paper it was a photo of a child who had been missing since 1997 and they had aged him up and it said have you seen me and he's unfound wow yeah it's crazy how often this shit is happening yeah it's crazy how little there seems to be done about it obviously i'm i'm not i know i know that on one hand i'm not claiming to be a professional you know i'm not in law enforcement right. and I, I don't know i don't particularly know every single capability or limit yeah that they have but it does seem to me that there are basic things that are not being done right right or at least in a lot of these cases i mean certainly in this one there's basic things that are not being done correct absolutely i mean look in 2002 right there were 400 registered missing children in kerala okay then you move up to 2006 and it stays around consistently around 400 in 2006 it shoots up to 1047 wow. missing children so clearly nothing is really being done and then there's the well you know if they're taken out of the state we can't really like find that's them. that's bullshit yeah that's such bullshit because if that's what's happening at a high rate then you allocate funds to authorities to be on top of that yeah right if you're aware that that's happening okay these guys mo is to kidnap these kids in one state and bring them to another state yeah then you have authorities on top of that shit right. monitoring the state lines any which way that you could travel state to state yeah make sure motherfuckers are not taking kids across state lines also like i feel like it can't if you pay attention i know you've brought this up many times in podcasts prior if you pay attention can't body language tell you when a kid is like clearly not belonging to the person he's with yeah that's what i'm saying so if it's becoming an epidemic to these numbers at every fucking even high way where you cross into state to state yeah. you have a fucking police barricade and say yo we're gonna check the car for kids yeah we're turning this car out all in the trunk right every fucking car i mean you're gonna catch the guys that are responsible for doing because obviously it's a bunch of repeat offenders yes right and you're gonna catch the guys responsible for doing this and then you're gonna have to keep doing it there's gonna be more there's gonna be more there's gonna be more yeah and you keep fucking catching them and punish them in the way that they deserve to be fucking punished absolutely and then that's how you get it's crazy right here's what i don't understand and in anywhere where you have these sorts of crimes happening mm -hmm. how the government is even bothering to pay attention to any of the other petty shit that it pays attention to yeah when you have heinous things like these human trafficking yeah right i mean this is the worst thing that could happen yes human trafficking because we know what it involves right it involves torture abuse rape murder yeah right it's the most heinous thing that could happen yeah and this is happening it's happening at an alarming rate and the government is still focusing on things like i don't know fucking censorship or yeah. allocating funds to just bullshit allocating funds to enforcing bullshit yeah when Every last fucking penny you have should go into getting more and more competent authorities to be on top of this fucking problem. Absolutely. I mean, that's the only thing that you should be concerned until everybody is safe. Yeah. Which is probably never, right? How can you ever be truly safe? Right. But you could probably get it way closer to perfect. You know what I mean? Like it couldn't be, it doesn't seem like it could be worse. Right. That's what I don't understand. So, and that's something that it's like, I don't know what we can even do about, right? Obviously, number one is like, use your power of voting. Yes. And try to be involved in terms of making sure that you're electing representatives that you trust that are going to do something. Yeah. But even, there's so many levels to that because number one, how do you ever even know what elected official to trust? 
trust because they're always going to tell you whatever the fuck you want to hear. Yeah. And then even if you get somebody, let's say you do get somebody who was honest about what they were saying and somebody that really wants to make a difference, as soon as they get into office, within the political system, they have a million roadblocks. Like this person can't even act. A person that wants to make change can't even act to make the change without 50 million roadblocks of other people that don't want that change to happen for their own fucked up nefarious reasons, whether it be like financial, it's mostly financial, right? right? That's what everybody, everything fucking revolves around. Uh, Yeah. So I don't know how this system changes. I, I, I I gotta be honest about that i don't know how it changes i think like honestly like you said the punishments have to be made stricter that's like, for sure for real because they're that's not, for sure they let them out in like what five ten years after they do something yeah that, stricter and also being enforced at all seems like a step because yeah. you got you, even in this story right you have yeah. people that are admitting to at least some sort of involvement right and then just nothing just just walk on off yeah oh but I we mean, can't find the evidence i mean that's insane and here's the thing that we can all do which is a recurring theme is be vigilant number one definitely the time is gone when you can feel safe letting your kids just go out to play yeah unsupervised absolutely that's over anywhere in the world yes you could be in the safest fucking neighborhood that's a bad idea yeah you know some people say well that's being too paranoid and it's not but guess what it's not it's not being too paranoid because it's paranoid until it fucking happens yeah, right it, it just has to happen once so, and, then and, what? And, and then what exactly and then and then what you've lost your kid so definitely don't be letting your kids be out there unsupervised you know that's something that we can all control yeah and we definitely can all teach our kids about being vigilant themselves and being safe right a lot of these kids are also baited with like laced candy and laced ice cream that's what i'm saying so you got to teach them to be vigilant you got to teach them to be like listen don't fucking talk to strangers yeah don't take shit from strangers run away scream make noise seek an adult you know we got to be enrolling all our kids in self-defense absolutely you know what i mean like again just don't fucking talk to these strangers and if the stranger pushes the issue scream make noise yeah scream for help run do whatever you got to do to get away from the situation but it's just so shitty how often this stuff is happening it's truly unfortunate it's crazy to see the numbers just shoot up like that and nothing is done by it like about it for it and it just keeps going on and how people are comfortably making the statement well you know once a certain point passes that uh, we, we can't there's nothing we can do dude they closed they closed this case like three times basically they kept trying to close it yeah four okay. it's unbelievable yeah we definitely do have to do more definitely watch your children there are a lot of times i'll be at the mall and i'll see a kid completely like by themselves parent not even in sight multiple times yeah you remember there's been a few times at the mall it's crazy that i'm able to say a few times when we've reunited lost children with their parents yeah and the parents are not even worried. They're like, oh. Not even, both times they were not even phased. Yeah, they're like, this is just normal. This is chill. Which is insanity. Yeah, it's truly. Like you lost your kid for mad long and you don't even care? Yeah, we'll see kids like trailing 20 feet behind their parent. Their parents right, like that's, that's on a, their phone. That's a frequent thing too. And it's like, bro, you're not concentrating. Somebody could easily grab that kid and you won't so know easily. until it's too late. It's crowded. Yeah. Like if you're not paying, and you're not paying attention because you're on your fucking phone. And for people that think that that's a fucking myth, very recently, I bet you remember that video was circulating yes. of that dude in the grocery store yeah. that grabbed the baby out of the stroller, right? Yeah. Didn't he hold a knife to that kid's neck yeah. when, when the cops came? And they actually had to put that guy down yeah. because he wasn't letting up. Yeah. But just to goes to show you that should that, that's how easily it could happen even when you're standing right next to your yes, kid with you just turn around to grab a can of beans and think about that situation if one thing had gone wrong that kid is gonna die yeah right die disappear right so the point is like be over vigilant you could never be too vigilant definitely not with kids definitely not with kids it's really a shame and it's really alarming when you see them just running around by themselves unsupervised their parents like either lagging far behind not paying attention or way ahead not looking back right pay attention to your goddamn kids absolutely well that about wraps it up for another episode of ectoplasm and evil we'll see you next time or will we ah (laughs) 